I still have you. My name is Dushan. Please come and take a seat. This letter and cool sprays. I'm gonna get to a podiatrist. Yes, I can help you. Uh, hi, I'm here to see a podiatrist. Yep, just wait in the waiting room. I'll call it out to you. Thanks, bro. Deal, Sean. You got a patient, mate? So, let's do a good a couple of tests today and see, try to get to the bottom of this ankle spray. Hey Stuart, after looking at your um, x-rays, we can definitely rule out that it's not an osseous problem. You can't see any foot fracture or bone damage on your um, rear foot, mid foot, fore foot. So we can definitely um, say that it's something to do with soft tissue on stress. So from the x-ray images, we found that it's more related to a tissue um, problem. So because of that, we're going to conduct a um, few tests to see um, which um, ligament is under pressure. So the first one is um, and, um, we're going to conduct an anterior draw test, which I put pressure on the anterior tibial fibula ligament, which I got you to stabilize um, your tibia, and then apply in, um, anterior force to the heel, which you did produce pain in there. So you move from the second test, which is a tilt test, which tests the calcaneal fibula ligament, and which the same was um, got you to stabilize your distal tibia and apply the inversion force, and which you still produce pain. So from all those um, tests we've done before, um, we found out that these three tissues are the ones being um, under pressure. So the first one being ATF4, which I explained before is the anterior tibial fibula ligament, which is the weakest of lateral ligaments, and receives anterior lateral movement of calcaneus, and it's also receives inversion and plant flexion, and it's most prone to damage and excessive supernovary movement. Moving to the second one, which is the calcaneal fibula ligament, it receives inversion during the dorsiflexion at the subtile joint, and it can compensate resistant inversion for this ligament there. And the last one being the perineal muscle, which is um, it's in the axis of subtalar joint, it's lateral deviated. So in your case, your subtalar joint axis is more lateral. So because of that, there's been more pressure put on to the perineal muscle there. So soon after I'm lost your gate, I've decided to bring up Shalin, who's a biomechanical specialist. Good to meet you, Dr. Shalin. All right, hi, Stuart, how are you doing? Alright, so after analysing your gait, Stuart, we found a few biomechanical uh, abnormalities. Sorry. Um, so we found you've got a rigid, pretty much a rigid foot, especially rigid rear and midfoot, um, and all those joints in it. So there's not much movement allowed in your foot. So we've also found you've got very narrow gait. So your feet are actually crossing over. So we found a value of about negative two, which is quite extreme, which we would find. We've also found from palpating and doing a static analysis that you've got a very lateral subtalar joint axis. We'll show you later how this is contributing. Um, we've found that you've got a restricted first ray and first MTPJ dorsiflexion equal to about 50 degrees, which is quite restricted as well. Um, and overall, we found that you've got a supinated foot. So from our foot posture index, we've found a value of negative two, which just shows mild supination. All right, Stuart, so this is how it all works in together. With your first ray restricted dorsiflexion, you're actually not allowing yourself to push off from what we would consider a normal position, so not from your first ray or first MTPJ. What's happening is you're actually taking off from more lateral position to compensate for that lack of movement. So from that, you're getting increased ground reaction forces lateral to your foot. And following on from that, we found that your centre of gravity, because of your narrow gait, which we found at negative two centimetres, is lateral to your subtalar joint. And this is just shown here. So a normal person or a normal patient would find that the centre of gravity is between your basic gait, would expect at least, at least 10 centimetres. But with yours, as you can see here, when you walk in your imprints, the centre of gravity line we've got in the middle here, your right foot is crossing that line. 
So as you can see here, normal would see right foot staying on that right side, left foot staying on the left side. So in conjunction with your restricted dorsiflexion and increased loading laterally, you can see here that when you're pushing off from your right foot, ground force, or your gravity, the gravity force is actually lateral to your subtalar joint, causing pressure down your lateral side and in, in causing lateral sprains. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Thank you for coming to start your treatment plan today, um, Stuart. Yeah, I'm just welcome. looking at the referral letter from your podiatrist. It seems that from your biomechanical analysis, we have found overloading on your lateral plantar surface, and in turn leading to overloading of the perineal muscles. Yeah. So we should work on strengthening the perineal muscles today, and trying to get some stability and balance back in your life. Awesome. Let's get started. <laughs> to help deal with Stuart's lateral ankle sprains, I'm going to try to alter his biomechanics by strengthening his calf muscles, trying to help him get some more balance, strengthening his, especially strengthening his pronators. This will prevent lateral ankle sprains. We can also look at giving him an orthotic or a brace in order to give him some stability until he regains strength. So first of all, I'm going to get him to try to work on his range of motion by getting him to do non-weight bearing exercises, like doing um, imaginary ABCs with his foot up in the air. I will also attempt to strengthen his pronators by getting him to resist towel, um, resist inversion by using therabands and also to invert the foot with resistance of therabands. I will get him to strengthen his plantar flexors by getting him to do calf raises first on one, one foot and then we'll get both feet involved. We can also help him work on his balance by getting him to do tandem stance, static and dynamic. 30 seconds eyes open, 30 seconds eyes closed. And as for dealing with pain, we can refer Stuart off to a GP to prescribe him some painkillers. We're going to start by working on your range of motion, non-weight bearing. So can I just get you to do the ABCs with your, um, with your foot, just in the air? ABC. <laughs> What's up? What the hell is that? Hey, what's up, B? C? Do that! Just keep it. Do it! <laughs> Ma, letter A. 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 Yeah, other one? Now we're together. That's some good. <laughs> we can also work on the strengthening of the perineal muscles by contracting them concentrically using TheraBand for resistance. This can also be done eccentrically for stability. Stuart's treatment management, we've made it um, patient-centred, so we need to get him to be doing stuff that he would be doing on the job, which is handing out tickets, and he's losing stability on that job. So if we can get him to just balance on this ball, and act as if he's handing out tickets on that ball, then that should be all good. <laughs> get up! What's... <laughs> oh, <I'm so> <laughs> <laughs> also, to work on his balance, we can get him to do tandem stance, um, whether that's static or dynamic. 30 seconds eyes open, 30 seconds eyes closed. So, if you want to try that mark, yep, just walk in a straight line. Now, turn around and go with your eyes closed. Hey, get all trippy. Get trippy, get trippy. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Stuart. We can also look at um, an orthotic that will insert a lateral wedge on, which will help distribute the ground reaction forces and also shorten the perineal muscles. What do you think? Yeah, pretty good idea. I like it. We can also look at giving you some tape, which will not allow the perineals from being overstressed and therefore reduce the pressure and stress during gait. Keep doing it. Watch
this. You can't over supinate your foot or invert your foot because as soon as you try to invert, that tape acts like a ligament. Well, Stuart, thanks for coming into the clinic. I'm also going to refer you off to a GP to get some painkillers and manage the pain while we strengthen those muscles up. That's what comes to the fix. Oh, you can go back to handy and use fines. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so furthering on and supporting our findings and treatment, Thomas, Kaminsky and Morrison in 2007 conducted a systematic review of foot characteristics in association with inversion ankle injury. They found that common mechanisms including pes cavus, excessive supination, first rate plantar flexion, in combination with misalignment of rear to mid foot alignment being precursors to lateral ankle sprains and furthermore, chronic ankle instability. As with Stuart, our patient, it was found through their review of literature that misalignment of axis, especially subtalar, caused a greater lateral loading during gait and especially lateral overloading during toe-off. Again, in previous studies, it was shown that people who had previously suffered lateral ankle sprains and instability had misalignments of this subtalar joint, either laterally or medially. As with Stuart, we identified the subtalar centre of axis being lateral, which ties in with previous and current research. It was found in their review that excessively pronated feet can also cause lateral ankle sprains. They found that the centre of axis of subtalar being medial causes a large supinary, supinatory moment. However, they also stated that the foot as a complex needs to be examined. And as in our case, the lateral centre of axis was not allowing a pronatory moment due to the rigid mid and rear foot, causing overloading to the lateral muscles and ligaments, and especially the perineals. In, the sum, in summary, they found that lateral ankle sprains are not caused by one single biomechanical variable, but as a complex of the foot. They found that the best prevention and treatment for the chronic ankle instability and lateral ankle sprains is early treatment and the focus on treatment of the foot in a complex rather than individual sections.